So we are in our second week of exploring the yamas or the five yogic restraints. And the yamas, they're like the yoga knows, like don't do these things and you'll suffer less. It's a pretty good deal if you don't, if you ask me. Um, and of course the yamas are the first limb of the eight limb path of yoga <laughs> or the raja path or the ashtanga path as we call it. So classical yoga is kind of what we're studying throughout the next actually several months spending time with each limb. And so this will be five weeks. Um, the niyamas, which we'll do next, will be the next five weeks. And it's good to remember as we go through this experience together that the way that Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras, is where the eight limbs come from, the way he wrote it is that everything that is said first matters continually. So we explored ahimsa last week, which is nonviolence. And you'll get a flavor of a hymn sign every single thing we'll do from now on. And today we'll do satya, which is non-lying or truthfulness. And you're going to get a flavor of that flowing all the way through all of the eight limbs. So while I'm definitely presenting the classes as individual classes, don't worry about if you miss one. You can always, of course, watch the recording. If you do come to them, you'll, you'll see the thread that kind of builds as we go from week to week and from experience to experience. So today we are exploring satya, which is non-lying or truthfulness. And as I was kind of contemplating this before class, because it's been a while since I've taught a class on this topic specifically, the word that came actually strongest to mind is authenticity. So I feel like truth can be relative sometimes. Authenticity isn't though. Um, as we refine our understandings of ourselves or what our inner truth is, you could call it that as well, um, there's not a lot of gray room. We know what feels right for us. We know what doesn't feel right for us. And while we can definitely talk about honesty and non-lying and truthfulness from the idea that like don't lie to people, a lot of the dishonesty that we experience actually is aversion or denial or just not really honoring our own truth or honoring the capital T truth, the capital R reality of the world around us. And so yoga in general helps us to do that insight work where we start to see the world a bit more objectively. And Satya is asking you to live your life by that truth and to do your work, to not avoid, to understand what it is that is keeping you stuck in cycles and really accepting the capital T truth of the world around you. How we'll apply that to our yoga practice tonight is around understanding limitations. And so some of you who have been with me for a while have probably done a practice similar to this where we're gonna get into some uncomfortable situations <laughs> and knowing why we want to leave those situations. Are we leaving because we're avoiding discomfort or can we stay? Because sometimes when we're in an uncomfortable posture and it's just uncomfortable, but not dangerous, and we stay even just a hair longer than our minds tell us to, we start to move past limitations. Now there's also the other side of that is understanding what actually is a necessary limitation, like how my body hurts. And like, if I stay longer, my hip's gonna pop off. There's that too. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But a lot of the time, I would say most of the time, the mind is giving up longer than the circumstances actually call for, long before the circumstances call for that ending to happen. So we're gonna get into some uncomfortable situations tonight. We're gonna rub up against that limitation. We're gonna rub up against what that actual truth is. And I'm gonna ask you to be with it even when it's uncomfortable, okay? So that is Satya. That's how we're going to practice tonight, looking at my notes, making sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, when we can honor our truth, we can honor the capital teach truth, we can evolve, we can grow past our limitations and we can become the best versions of ourselves. And we can step forward with more grace and we suffer less at the end of the day. And again, there is this sense of ahimsa in this nonviolence. By honoring our truth, we are actually practicing nonviolence as well. Everything builds. All right, enough chatting, enough talking. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get centered. Please sit comfortably. It's all good stuff now. I could talk forever on this. But for now, we'll practice. <laughs> so taking a couple of deep breaths in and out, and you might even want to sigh with those exhales. 
<sighs> then allow the mouth to close. You could also talk about satya as honoring what is. So let's look at what is right now. Let's take a look at your body. The state of your body, the feelings in your body, all of these experiences, the comfort, the discomfort, the tiredness, the restlessness, the calmness, peacefulness. For many of us, we're having all of these experiences at once. And while we might wish for some of that to not be true, the truth is, is that it is true that we do experience all these things, that we are holding on to all of these experiences, good, bad, and otherwise. There's a level of acceptance that has to come here. Accept your body exactly as it is right now. The light and the dark. And if you're able to maybe even filter a little bit of compassion to the body for its experiences, noting any resistance to that, because that's fine too. And how is your mind tonight? What do you bring with you to this practice? the thoughts, the mental emotional quality, the distractions, the things that weren't done on your to-do list that you might dwell over. The state of your mind is the state of your mind right now. And while our practice will help with the body and will help with the mind, here is where we begin. Here's where we start. This is the truth. Your mind is in this state. This is how it is. This is how we are in this moment. Compassion for that. Compassion for all of that. And let that compassion, that understanding of truth kind of resonate within you on a psychological level, on an embodied level, as we chant Om three times. Deep breath in. Oh. 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 your palms to your heart and lower the chin, continuing to honor that truth of where you are in this moment, body, breath, energy, and mind. Let's let this practice be in service of all of that and your own evolution, rubbing the palms together. Take the warm palms over your eyes and brushing back over the top of your head, down your neck bringing yourself back to your space. Oh, even that centering practice we just did is a great practice for satya, just mindfully being aware of what is and accepting it, just as it is in this moment. All right, hands and knees, please. <laughs> We're gonna be on hands and knees for just a little bit. So if you want cushion underneath your knees, go ahead and bring that there. You don't have to suffer needlessly. <laughs> it's okay to be to sit with discomfort, but if you can help yourself, help yourself. So hands under your shoulders, knees beneath your hips. Inhale, look forward, tailbone lifts. Exhale, cat pose, 
Round the back, tuck the chin and tail under. Then inhale, look forward. And exhale, round the back. Let's just keep going a little bit. Getting the spine warmed up here. Beginning to link our breath and movement. And as you're aware of sensation in the body here, especially as we get warmed up, you'll notice tension, stress in the body, areas that have yet to be loosened up. See if you can address those or bring a, an awareness of compassion and acceptance to those states, whether it's discomfort or just an awareness of tightness. It doesn't have to be completely dramatic. <laughs> Though it can be. Good. With your next exhale, let's do child's pose. Seat to the heels, forehead to the floor. Inhale, float back up, hands and knees. Exhale again, child's pose. Let's keep going. Inhale, hands and knees. Exhale, child's pose. And the shoulders warmed up here, the hips, continuing for the breath and movement to be linked. Moving as long as you're breathing, breathing as long as you are moving. Good, let's add on to this with your next inhale, come back to hands and knees, exhale, bend your elbows in towards your waist, bring the chest one inch from the ground and then push up and go back to child's pose. Let's do that again, these chest presses. Inhale up to hands and knees, exhale, bend the elbows in and push up and back. Inhale, exhale, chest press. Push up and back. Let's do a few more rounds, all right? Getting the shoulders and arms nice and warmed up here as well. Still movement in the spine and hips. Starting to build energy in the body, waking you up a bit. <laughs> Good, let's do one more time. Chest press, push up, child's pose. And then come back to hands and knees, curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Good. Now let's warm up the legs a bit more here. Let's walk the dog out. Pedaling the feet, pressing one heel to the floor, bending the opposite knee, deep breaths. Feel the hip bones reaching toward the sky as well. The back stays flat. Good. All right, inhale, float down onto hands and knees lightly. Exhale, child's pose and stay. Let's take a few deep breaths here in child's pose. Good, and then inhale, come back up to hands and knees. All right, so I've turned, but you can keep facing the direction you're facing. So we're on hands and knees and go ahead and step your left foot out to the side. Now the leg itself is in line with both hip bones, so it's not too far forward, it's not too far back. And the left foot is flat on the floor, grounding through the left pinky toes. Good, hands are under the shoulders, knees under the hips or the right knee under the hip, I should say. <laughs> Take the shoulders down the back, look forward, and feel your tailbone lifting toward the ceiling behind you. Tailbone's lifting. Keep the tail lifting as you glide backwards. And you'll hit a point where you start to feel a stretch on the inner thigh, and then come back up, inhale. Exhale again, going back. Keep the tailbone lifting as much as you can. Inhale up. Exhale back. Let's do a few more. Keep the tailbone lifting. 
Good. Then inhale, come back up. Keep the leg out to the side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bend the left knee. Sink down into the hip. And then go ahead and straighten the left leg. Again, exhale, sink into that left hip. Inhale, come back up. Let's keep going, all right? Sink in and extend. The hips do not like to be rushed. So I would take some time getting into them. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Bend the left knee and then straighten the leg. Step the knee on in child's pose. Notice the difference between the two sides. And then come back up to hands and knees and we'll do the other side. So step your right foot out. Again, the leg is in line with both hip bones, not too far forward or back, grounding through the pinky edge of that right foot. Look forward, inhale, tailbone lifts. Exhale, just glide backwards. And then inhale, come back up. And exhale, glide back. And let's just keep it going, all right? Only going back as far as you can while you keep the tailbone lifting. Here's where we get into some satya as well, this authenticity of your practice. It's like, do you tuck the tailbone under a little bit here to go further or can you keep it engaged and keep the integrity of the practice? No shame implied there. Just when you're aware <laughs> that, you're, that you're kind of tweaking it a bit, just come back into the proper alignment. One more time. And then come back up, inhale. Exhale, bend your right knee, sink down into that hip. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend the right knee, sink in. Inhale up, and let's just keep it going. Moving with your breath, sinking in, exhale. Inhale, lifting back out. Again, taking our time getting into these hips tonight. All right, let's do one more time together. Sink on in. And then go ahead and straighten that right knee. Bring the right leg in, child's pose. Again, noticing sensation here. All right, and then inhale, come back up to hands and knees and take the left leg out to the side again. Same alignment, leg in line with the hips and bring your right hand underneath your face. Good, your left arm is out to the side, palm face down, take a deep breath in here. With your exhale, swing the left arm into the air, gate pose, open up and twist. Inhale, come halfway out. Exhale, twist. Inhale, come halfway out. Let's keep going. Exhale, twisting. Inhale, unwinding. We'll do two more and then we'll hold. Good. Now, as you exhale this time, come into the pose and stay. Working that left shoulder back behind you and breathe. All right, inhale, unwind. Bring the left hand down. Step the left leg in, child's pose. Just for one breath. And then inhale back up and step the right leg out, leg in line with the hips, bring the left hand underneath your face, right arm out to the side, palm face down, inhale here, exhale, twist, sweep the right arm into the air. Good, inhale, come halfway out, exhale, twist. And let's keep going, inhale, halfway out, exhale, twist.
Nice rotation in the spine here. Let's do a couple more, all right? Now take your time getting there, but as you exhale this time, you come into the pose. Let us stay. Keep the right shoulder working back behind you. Breathing. Good, all right, inhale, unwind, bring the right hand down. Once again, step the leg in, child's pose. Hmm, feeling, sensation. From the gait pose, from that hip exercise, all of the above. All right, let's continue our warm up. Inhale up to hands and knees. Curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Right, and let's move through Danda Kriya a few times. Inhale, come into plank pose. Exhale, bend your elbows and towards your waist. Bring your chest one inch from the floor, chaturanga. Press the arms straight. Take the shoulders back, upward facing dog. Exhale, pull back into downward facing dog. Good, that's down to Kree. Let's do it again. Inhale, plank. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's move through this slowly. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. I know slower makes it harder. Exhale, uh, downward facing dog. Again, plank. Chaturanga, upward facing to downward facing. We're gonna do a couple more times. Take your time with it. Plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Fifth time's a charm, plank pose. Chaturanga, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Let's stay for a breath. All right, from downward facing dog, lift your right leg into the air. With your exhale, swing or carry, step the right foot forward, and then turn the back foot flat to the floor, toes pointing forward 45 degrees, prepping for warrior one. Bend the front knee deeply, square the body to look forward, then inhale, extend the arms forward, peel the chest away from the thigh, come on up to the Arbhadrasana warrior one. Good, let's breathe here. Good, take a deep breath in. And then exhale, bring your hands down to the floor and step back to downward facing dog and we'll do the other side. So lifting the left leg up. Exhale, step the left foot between the hands, help it through. Back foot comes flat to the floor, toes pointing forward, bend the front knee. Inhale, warrior one. Sweep the arms forward, come on up. Good, staying for a few breaths. Good, deep breath then. And exhale, hands to the ground, step back, downward facing dog. Let's just keep this going, right leg lifts. Exhale, step the right foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, warrior one. Stay for the exhale. And inhale, straighten the right leg. And this time exhale, fold over the right leg. You'll feel the stretch in the back of the right thigh. Deep breath in. And exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Back foot flat, warrior one. Inhale, come on up. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, straighten the left knee. Exhale, fold over the left leg. Deep breath in. And exhale, step back to downward facing dog. We'll do one more time on each side for now. Right leg lifts. Exhale, step it through. 
Back foot flat, warrior one. Good, inhale, straighten the leg. And exhale, fold over it. Deep breath in. Downward facing dog. Left leg lifts and step it through. Back foot flat, come on up warrior. Good, inhale, straighten the left knee. Exhale, fold over that leg. Take a deep breath in. This time, step the right foot forward, coming into Uttanasana, the standing forward fold. Press palms to shins, come halfway up here. Exhale, fold down. Let's do that two more times. Halfway up, chest parallel to the floor, spine extending forward. Exhale, fold. Once more, inhale. And exhale down. With your next inhale, sweep the arms out to the side of the flat back. Come all the way up. And palms to the heart. Good. Feel sensation. Your breath rate, your heart rate. You can bring back in that same mindful awareness that we practiced in our centering. How is the body? How is the mind? Honoring what's true, not what is ideal <laughs> or what you wish it were like. Because when we don't honor our truth, we end up being reckless. <laughs> we push ourselves too far or we don't push ourselves far enough or we go the wrong direction. So much, so much can happen with that. All right, so I'm gonna have you take a wide stance on your mat now, nice and wide apart. And for now, let's have the toes pointing directly forward. So not out to the side, but directly forward. If anything, the toes are pointing inward, just a hair, all right? Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward and down. Good, sweep the arms out to the side, come all the way back up. Let's do that again. Exhale, fold all the way down. Nice back strengthening here. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to switch this up just a little bit. Inhale, come all the way up. We're going to do some twisting. Exhale, bend your left knee. Bring your right hand down in front of the foot and twist. Take the left shoulder back behind you. Inhale, unwind, come all the way up. Exhale, bend the right knee. Bring the left hand down in front of the foot. Roll the right shoulder back, twist. Inhale, come all the way back up. First side again, bend the left knee. Right hand comes down, twist. Inhale up. Bend the right knee. Left hand comes down, twist. Inhale back up. Let's do a couple more. Left knee, right hand down. Inhale. Right knee, left hand comes down. Inhale up. Last time on each side. Left knee, right hand. And up. Right knee, left hand. And up, reach the arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward and down. Come halfway up, inhale. Exhale, sink down. Take the arms out to the side, come all the way up. And palms to the heart. Good, getting the body nice and warm. Where of your heart rate. Good. So from here, we're gonna move through a sun salutation. We won't spend too much time in the sun salutation part of our practice today, but we're gonna work with warrior one again and Danda Kriya, just to continue to get the hips and the body nice and warmed up to do frog pose a little bit later on. I'm actually telling you where we're going this time. <laughs> so I'm gonna just bring it on you. I'm like, we're doing frog pose. So whatever direction is the front of your mat, go ahead and step that way. Have your face stacking underneath your hips. Bring your palms to your heart. 
You're aware of the current experiences of your body. You're aware of the current qualities of your mind. You're okay with all of that. <laughs> and you breathe. And let's flow. With your next inhale, sweep the arms down and up. Exhale, fold forward, palms to shins. And release, step the right foot back, back foot flat, bend the front knee, warrior one. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, fold over it. Deep breath in and step back to downward facing dog. Let's move through Danda Kriya, plank pose, chaturanga, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Once you're there, right leg lifts and step it through. Back foot flat, warrior one again. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, straighten the right knee. Exhale, fold over it. Deep breath in. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Palms to shins and fold. Sweep the arms out to the side and he'll come all the way up. Palms to the heart. We're just gonna keep the energy moving. Inhale, sweep the arms up again. Exhale, fold forward and down. Palms to shins and fold. Step the left foot back. Back foot flat, warrior one. When you're ready, come on up. Inhale, straighten the right knee. Exhale, fold over it. Inhale, downward facing dog. Dandakriya, plank, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. <laughs> Lift the left leg up and step it through. Back foot flat, warrior one. Good, straighten the leg and fold over it. Deep breath in. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Palms to shins. Exhale, fold. Sweep the arms out to the side, come all the way up. And palms to the heart. Again, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, fold forward and down. Palms to shins. And down, right foot steps this time. Warrior one. Good, lift and fold. Deep breath in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Danda Kriya, you know the moves. Turning to downward facing dog. Once you're there, lift the right leg high and step it forward. Back foot flat, warrior one. Straighten the leg. Exhale, fold over it. Deep breath in. Exhale, step forward. Palms to shins. And fold. Arms out to the side, come all the way up, inhale. Palms to heart. Keep going, inhale. Sweep up. Exhale, fold forward. Palms to shins. Left foot steps. Warrior one. Straighten the knee. Fold over it. Inhale. Downward facing. Danda Kriya. Once you're back in downward facing dog, lift the left leg and step it through. Back foot flat, warrior one. Straighten the leg and fold over it. Inhale and step forward, exhale, palms to shins and release. Inhale, arms all the way up and palms to the heart. Let's do one more final round, all right? Inhale, sweep up, exhale, swan dive forward and down. Palms to shins, 
and release. Step the right foot back. Coming into warrior one, inhale. Sink in and stay. <laughs> Some of you didn't know what's happening. <laughs> Staying in the pose. Hips are sinking down, arms are lifting, taking the shoulders back, heart lifting toward the ceiling. Deep breaths here. Now pick a point on the ceiling or the high wall in front of you and just breathe with that point. Allow that to be your focal point as you stay and hold this posture. And you might notice some discomfort that comes up as I suggest that we hold this posture. Notice that. But you know you're strong. Each of us in our own ways, you know what your limit is and isn't. Discomfort is not always the limit. Breathe. Steady the breath. It's okay if you're shaking a bit. Even that's fine. Even that's fine. Can you stay for two more breaths? Just two more breaths. It's not long at all. You're already halfway done. Then inhale, straighten the knee. Then exhale, fold long over that leg. I'm just taking a few breaths here, feeling the length in the back of the left leg. All right, so when you're ready, please step back, downward facing dog. Danda Kriya, on your own. Returning to the downward facing dog. Good, so <laughs> I wanna give you one more experience of a bit of discomfort or like, you know, kind of like maybe a surprise to the body. And it's okay if you can't do it but just notice what comes up, all right? So let's come back into plank. Let's come into chaturanga, one inch from the floor, and then press into upward facing dog. Now without transitioning to plank or downward facing dog, I want you to come back to chaturanga. So you'll curl the toes under, you'll bring the chest down and you'll hover and then push up. Fun, right? <laughs> let's come back into down dog. We're gonna give that one more try, just that way you know what we're doing now. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And then again, just kind of reverse it. So they're back into a chaturanga, one inch from the floor. And then do your best to push the floor forward, press yourself up and back to downward facing dog. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> so much fun. All right, we're almost done with our warrior series. Let's lift the right leg up, please and step that right foot forward, back foot flat, warrior one, come on up. Sink on in and get steady. We'll be here for just a bit. Again, you can focus on a point on the ceiling or the high wall in front of you and just breathe with that point. The eyes are focused, the mind is focused. It doesn't create all the stories around the discomfort or the experience. You're just present with what is, without all the window dressing, without all the emotional reaction to sensation. And you can notice the body, of course. We're not trying to ignore it. And keeping the mind steady, even if the body starts to shake a bit or start to feel maybe weaker, that's fine. Stay for just a few more breaths. Are you pulling out of the pose? Stay in it. Two more breaths, not very long, you're almost there. 
Then inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, fold over it. Breathe. And then curl the back toes under and step forward, Uttanasana. Palms to shins, halfway up, extend your spine forward. And exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side with a flat back, come all the way up. Palms to heart. Be with what's there. Notice what's there. In your body, your mind, how's your breath? What's your energetic state? It's okay if you don't know the answer to these questions. All right, beautiful. So we're working our way closer to frog pose, everybody's favorite cry posture. <laughs> it's my favorite cry posture. So I'm gonna have you come back into wide leg stance, toes pointing directly forward. We're not coming into frog just yet, but we will be here in just a few minutes. To start, I'm just gonna have you fold forward, toes pointing directly forward, and just sink kind of either toward the legs or between the legs, depending on your flexibility. Good. And then bring yourself up halfway, starting with hands and fingertips on the ground. Now notice that your chest is parallel to the floor and try to keep it that way. And I'm gonna give you a couple of options for your hands for this one. Your hands can come onto your shins. That's a bit easier. Hands on your hips, it's a bit harder. Or hands or an arms out to the side, the hardest, okay? And it's okay if you wanna change your mind at any point. So bring your hands into one of these positions. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bend your right knee, sink down into that hip. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, bend your left knee, sink down into the hips. Good, come back up. Chest parallel to the ground still. Right knee and up. Left knee and up. Let's keep going. From side to side, just floating along, working with these hips. <laughs> Keep going from side to side. You can choose your own pace, but just go with the breath. Inhale, extending, exhale, bending for just a little bit longer. You can change where your hands are at. One more time on each side, right leg, then left leg. Straighten, bring the hands back to the floor and fold. Deep breath in and out. Gorgeous, all right. So from this forward fold, I'm gonna have you walk your feet off the back of your mat. So the feet are still wide. They're off the back of the mat now. And your hands are gonna walk to the over the front of your mat. So you're just kind of hovering over it at this point. We're prepping for frog pose. And if you want to, you can watch me do this once. If you've done it before, just come into it. We're gonna lift the heels, release the insides of the knees down onto the mat, okay? And if you need more cushion, you can take the edge of your mat and just pull it over and bring your knees onto the doubled mat, okay? And then the inside arches of the feet come flat to the floor, kind of look like frog legs behind you, and then come down onto your forearms. Now don't collapse the chest here. Don't hang down for the ground. Keep the chest parallel to the floor and looking relatively downward. And then you're gonna traction your hips backwards. Just slide them on back and you'll hit a wall in your body. <laughs> mm. 
And just start with awareness as you hold this pose. How does it feel to be in this body? What are all of the experiences? There's the loud experiences, the discomfort, but there might be some softness here too. It's the quality of your breath. Can you improve that? Breath is such a great support in these practices. Steady your breath. And notice what thoughts come to your mind. Not looking for trouble per se, but just noticing what comes up. Maybe there's some beliefs that you can't do this, or that this posture isn't for you, or maybe there's a thought that's like, oh, I can't hold this for that long. When those thoughts come up, just ask yourself, is anything else true? Can anything else be true? Can I feel empowered in this moment, even when there is maybe some intense sensation. Keep the hips tractioning back. Maybe there's some emotion that comes up, frustration, anger, sadness. That's fine too. Keep breathing steadily. Your mind is conditioned to create stories around sensation, especially pain and discomfort. But it's just stories. You can peel all of that back. We're left with just what is. There's sensation in the hips here. It might not be comfortable, but it's not dangerous. We can be with it. We can breathe with it longer. We can push past that knee jerk limitation. Because the truth is, unfortunately, that life is full of these kind of discomforts. But if we can practice here in our yoga practice, creating equanimity in the face of discomfort, we can more readily do that in our lives. So stay with it, breathe with it. Keep the hips tractioning back. No, your screen hasn't frozen. We're still here. We're still breathing. We're staying in the endeavor. Stay for three more breaths. You're right at that edge. Stay with it. And then coming out, walk back up onto your hands slowly. You're in here really deeply, by the way. Take your time, be gentle. You need not suffer heedlessly. And then bring the feet together behind you or toward one another. And then carefully bring the knees together and immediately come into child's pose, balasana. Just fold over the legs, sink down. And you're still in the experience here. There's still sensation in the hips. Stay with it. Don't go away. And this is your opportunity to be truly aware of what is. Some compassion and acceptance for what is. 
as well. There's this comfort, there's the release that comes as we come out of it. The release of tension in the hips, down into your pelvis. Such relief. Please take your time, but from here, we're gonna slither forward down onto our abdomens. If you're sideways on your mat, which you probably are, you have to turn first. <laughs> and then we'll come down onto our bellies. And notice how that feels after stretching the hips as we have. We're definitely gonna do some counter posing. So have your hands stacking right underneath your shoulders, elbows bent and squeezing into your side. And for practicing locust tonight, I'm gonna to have you have your thighs and legs together as much as possible, okay? It's like the analogy that's used sometimes, like you're trying to squeeze a piece of paper between your thighs. That's the engagement we wanna have for this one. Good, getting light on the hands with your next inhale. Roll the shoulders down the back, lift the head, chest, and the legs. Keep the thighs squeezing together. Exhale, release down. Let's do that again. Inhale, squeeze on up, squeezing that paper between the thighs. Exhale down. Let's do three more. Inhale, locus. Exhale, float down. Squeeze on up and down. Once more, squeeze up and release on down. You can allow the legs to come apart. And then from here, take your time, but roll over onto your back. It's the roll and scooch. All right, so on your back, go ahead and hug your knees into your chest. And then take your arms out to the side, making a T-shape with your body or doing goalpost arms. Take a deep breath in with your exhale, allow your knees to fall to your right side. Inhale, come back to center. And then take them the other way. Exhale, knees to the left. Inhale back to center, exhale to the right. Inhale back, exhale to the left and inhale back. Now taking the knees to the right this time, go ahead and stay. Feel your left shoulder anchor back behind you. Your right hand can rest gently on top of the left thigh and your chin can turn to the left away from the knees. Let's breathe here. All right, with your next inhale, unwind. Take your time, but when you're ready, take the knees to the left. Feel your right shoulder anchor back this time. Left hand can rest on top of the right thigh and turn your chin to the right, away from the knees. Breathing deeply, breathing calmly.
Inhalate, inhale, carefully unwind. Hmm. And then bring your feet flat to the floor, heels underneath your knees, hip width apart. We're just gonna practice a quick bridge pose. So with your next inhale, go ahead and lift the hips into the air, reach your pelvis toward the ceiling and stay. Your arms can stay down by your side. Breathe here, feeling some extension in the front of the body, the hips, the abdomen, the pelvis. Three, two, press up higher. And one, release the hips down with control, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then hug the knees into your chest one more time, holding onto the knees or shins. Go ahead and curl your chin in towards your throat, bring your forehead up toward the knees and get a tighter grip on the legs. Maybe hold down further toward the ankles and then keep that tighter grip and release the head and shoulders back down. Now, after doing that, your lower back might pop up off the ground. So keeping the same hold you have on the shins, curl the tailbone back down to the floor. Staying for just another breath or two. And then when you feel complete here, go ahead and extend your legs down to the floor. And make yourself ready for Shavasana, corpse pose. Bringing any support where you might need it, a blanket into the head, you can cover up with a blanket. Take the next few moments to prepare you and your space to rest. Now is the time to rest. And if you're still making your way to Shavasana, keep going at your own pace. But once you're there, make any additional movements to make yourself 10 to 15% more comfortable. Allow yourself that. And then settle into stillness. Not stillness because you're holding yourself still, but stillness because you know, as of this moment, there's no need to move. All the work is done. All the doing has been completed. Now is the time to just be. There's just that gentle movement of the breath. And when your mind wanders, as it will do, if you feel yourself like just really not present, the breath always brings you back. Part of acknowledging truth is building toward more and more objective awarenesses. And part of that is just having the ability just to watch your thoughts passively without having to change them, without having to judge them. So just become aware of your thoughts. Maybe it's your internal dialogue, maybe it's images. 
just watch the thoughts as if they were on a movie screen or over a loudspeaker. You're simply a passive observer of your consciousness. Peace. 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 
So go ahead and take a deeper, fuller breath. Making gentle movements in your hands and feet, your arms and your legs. In time, rolling to your right side. And coming on up to a seat. Now, as you come to a seat, sit comfortably. We'll be here for a little longer than we normally are. I've baked in a bit more time today for meditation. Definitely great to have a cushion underneath you. And allow your eyes to close as your hands rest in your lap or on your knees. Tune into the state of your body, breath and mind. How's it going in there? And one element of satya that I've not really explored with you yet today is not just honoring truth, which we do, but the persistent pursuance of truth always knowing that behind one awareness of truth, there's even a deeper truth behind that, a higher reality behind that. And our goal as yogis is to understand more and more and see more and more of that truth, especially when it comes to our own psyches. So to start that process, I'd like you to again become aware of your thoughts. Your first awareness might be you are now aware of your thoughts. Become aware of your thoughts. And you're watching them from a more objective place. You're not trying to control them or judge them or analyze. If the analogy is helpful, it's like watching them on a movie screen or hearing them on a speaker. Aware of your thoughts. If you get involved, just step back, simply observe. Now begin to get curious about your thoughts. Curious in this instance for a thought or a thought pattern that feels most pervasive. Maybe it has a lot of charge to it. Maybe it repeats itself or doesn't really leave. Is there a thought like that that's present? Pervasive thought. Maybe it's worry for something or concern for something. And once you have it, if you don't have it, just keep watching your thoughts. 
Once you have it, pull it central in your mind. And ask yourself as you look at this thought or acknowledge it, what is this thought trying to communicate with you? What does it want you to know? Why does it keep coming back? Why does it show up with this strong, pervasive energy? What truth is it trying to tell? Allow yourself to be open to whatever comes through in that investigation. Now, when you hear the reason why, ask why it wants you to know that. Ask why again. Dig deeper, seek the deeper truth. Why does it want you to know that? And when you get another answer, ask why again? What's the deeper truth here? What's the deepest reasoning? There's a saying that says, when you know the truth, keep seeking the truth. Layer by layer. Each layer is helpful in the understanding of where this thought comes from, why it wants to be here so strongly, why it's so pervasive. You follow that trail on and on until you reach the deepest truth you can handle. Maybe today is not the day to seek the ultimate truth of that thought process. But maybe you just dig a little bit deeper, asking why, seeking more. Wherever you have arrived at by this point, just honor that truth. where this thought has come from, why it's here, what it needs you to know, why it needs you to know that. You feel a contentment that you've gained new knowledge, helpful in your pursuance of truth, in your practice of ahimsa, nonviolence. So with that, please begin to take a deeper, fuller breath. Bring your palms together. Just honoring the truth within you, the ultimate truth, the deepest truth, and all the truths on the journey there, this constant endeavor, this constant journey. And may the practice here tonight keep you in that endeavor. So until we meet again, namaste.